Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Wednesday, the 2nd of February. Now, we want to look today at why the death rate in the United States has been high really all the way through this pandemic and remains disturbingly high e even as we speak. And hospitalizations have started to go down in some areas as we looked at the areas that were affected by Omicron first, but still very high in many parts of the states. And then briefly, I want to look at some science today as well. So obviously, you and I have been learning lots and lots of about immunity uh, as we've gone through this pandemic. Uh, but science is actually le learning new, new knowledge as well. So I want to look at an example of that, some of the good things that seem to be coming out of the, the pandemic. And I'm expecting an awful lot more scientific develop, developments coming out of, of the pandemic as time goes on. But let's start looking today. Here we are. Um, I want that one. Yeah, um, Pfizer and Moderna initiated clinical trials for an Omicron based vaccine. And, and we understand that these trials are actually uh, started and going on now. Now, I really hope that this is not necessary because the whole point about this Omicron wave, what, why it's such a good thing, is it's giving us huge amounts of natural immunity. And I'm expecting the natural immunity to have a fair degree of longevity, where we know that the vaccine immunity so far has, has been waning. So let, let's hope that no new vaccines are required. That would really uh, concern me if that turns out to be the case, that new vaccines are required. Um, but I'm pretty confident um, that we're going to get natural immunity and we can't keep vaccinating ourselves every few months. Natural, we've got natural immunity to every other type of pathogen uh, apart from those we vaccinate for. So I really don't see why this should be any different. Um, but anyway, let's move on. Now, uh, new cases per million. Now, we see a very short-lived Omicron wave there in Australia. It scooted up. Uh, and then and then it scooted down really quite quickly. But this is only for part of Australia, the parts of Australia that have been uh, open. Western Australia still closed down, so that's still to come. But what we're seeing, what we hope for, following the South Africa pattern, and to a large extent following the UK pattern, is a very short-lived Omicron wave, up quickly, down quickly. It, this is encouraging, leaving huge herd immunity, I believe, in its wake. Let's hope we start seeing some more figures soon for herd immunity and, and, and the benefits of herd immunity. We're not seeing a lot of figures on that at the moment. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful we will start seeing more fairly soon. We've got some good ones that we looked at just yesterday from the Centers for Disease Control, and they were very uh, encouraging. Uh, but mo moving on, uh, deaths, um, and well, Japan, Canada, India, Actually, India, the, the, the rates here have never been, they've never been accurate in India. I'm just talking to a medical uh, consultant this morning in, in India, and he says um, that, the, the, like everyone he knows, has, got, has had Omicron in the past few weeks. Now, in his hospital, they had four Omicron wards. Uh, they're now down to one Omicron ward. So it looks like India's done the same thing. It's absolutely scooted up, but gone down quickly. Again, hopefully with this huge herd immunity in its wake, which is what we are hoping for. Now, but when we look at deaths, it's a slightly different picture. Um, cumulative COVID confirmed 19 deaths. Now, these are cumulative. Now, Czechia, Czech Republic, Romania, okay, they, they do have challenges in terms of healthcare in those areas. Um, United States, though, high. United Kingdom, lower. Russia, lower still. Well, that's the official Russian data. Uh, but then we see this big gap, Sweden, Switzerland, Germany, Netherlands, Israel, Canada, Denmark, Finland, Norway, uh, Japan, Taiwan. So we see that the States is doing a lot worse than mo most other comparable uh, large, rich countries. And th 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 this, there's so, so many people have died in the States. It really is so concerning that this is the case. And I don't think we fully know why it is, but let's look at some ideas. Uh, so an average of 63% higher than other large, wealthy nations. That, that's a lot of extra people. But lower than Russia, Ukraine, Poland, Greece, Czech Republic, uh, Czech Republic. Now, we're saying it's lower than the Russian data there. And we're pretty sure about that, really, in terms of uh, the official Russian data looking lower. But the, the, official, the, the unofficial actual death rate is probably higher than the United States, I would believe. 
Uh, so, uh, jo- Joseph Dellingham, Associate Professor, University of Washington. The United States stands out as having a relatively high fatality rate. It does. There's, there's been more loss than anyone wanted or anticipated. That's true. We didn't anticipate as many deaths, I don't think. No one anticipated as many deaths. I, I remember way back in oh, 2020, the chief scientific officer and the chief medical officer thinking that we might, might, might have 20,000 deaths in this pandemic. And sadly, it's turned out to be a lot more than that. And this is despite Omicron and vaccination. So in the, in the States, of course... Um, there's been lots of um, immunity generated as a result of vaccination and a lot because of Omicron. But despite this, still the very high death rates, unfortunately, in the States. Uh, what are the factors here? Lower vaccination rates and boosters in vulnerable people, because, of course, it's the vulnerable people that go into hospital with comorbidities, as we know. Lower vaccination rates in boosters, most vulnerable people. Unvaccinated people make up the majority of hospitalizations. That is still true. Waning protection, because the United States vaccinated quite a lot of people at quite an early stage. So that is um, waning. And we know that the protection wanes, unfortunately, from our uh, high tech vaccines. Uh, unboosted, uh, uninfected older people. So here we have the two, the two, the two factors because we know that the natural immunity protects us against severe disease and death. We know that the vaccination does. Uh, we believe the natural immunity is even better from the recent CDC data. But of course, some older vulnerable people have had neither and have not been vaccinated, putting them at an unfortunately significant risk. Uh, now, some deaths, some deaths here could actually be from uh, Delta because um, even though Delta has been replaced now with Omicron, some people have had this for a long period of time. And these could be some residual deaths from the uh, Delta wave, which is true. But Omicron's likely responsible for most of the current deaths. Robert Anderson, Mortality Statistics Center Disease Control. And the increases we're seeing are probably in Omicron deaths. So a few Delta deaths are feeding through, but they're mostly from Omicron deaths. David Dow, the epidemiologist. We finally started to get to a stage where most of the population has been exposed to either a vaccine or the virus multiple times by now. I think we are, I think we're now likely to start seeing, seeing things be more synchronized going forward. Now, it sounds to me that he's actually talking about some herd immunity developing there. And when he says things being synchronized going forward, what he means is he hopes that the death rate in the United States will be more comparable with other large industrial countries like like the UK, Germany, France, Australia, Canada. But the price that the United States has paid to get this level of uh, immunity, of this level of herd immunity, has been tragically high. And many of you watching in the States will have lost family members, which, of course, is, 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 is quite devastating. And um, we, you know, our, our, our thoughts are very much with you and our condolences are very much with the large death rate that you have suffered from and uh of course comorbidities in the states huge factor huge factor and just to demonstrate that this is the data here from the office for national statistics i've just downloaded this this afternoon so this is just the brand new data uh showing the comorbidities in terms of percentages so in the UK, we see that, and this is in terms of percentages here, in terms of deaths, diabetes, the highest, chronic lower respiratory diseases, hypertensive diseases, diseases of the urinary system, ischemic heart disease, symptoms and signs of other long-term conditions, dementia, Alzheimer, heart failure and complications, cardiac rhythm, dysrhythmias, the heart not beating irregularly, blood cancers, and uh, finally some uh, there, COVID cases with no pre-existing pathology in some cases. And all of these conditions, um, of course, that we know for sure uh, people have died uh, as complications of COVID with in the UK are also very high prevalent conditions in the United States. Obesity, hypertension, diabetes, ischemic heart disease, I mean, you could almost say that these are endemic diseases in the United States, and this is a huge factor. Uh, so maybe maybe this is time to really start thinking about individual health, your individual health, my individual health, 
and of course health at, at a community level and of course many things we've said <laughs> as we've gone along in this video series has illustrated how that can be uh, assisted or at least uh, op optimized to some extent now this this last part here i'm not going to do this in too much detail but interesting nature immunology humoral arm of innate immunity now we often think of uh, the immune system in two parts there's the innate immunity uh, and there's the acquired immunity and of course we've always taught that the innate immunity is 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 non-specific it doesn't attack particular antigens or particular viruses the body has to learn to recognize those and develop acquired immunity that's what we've always thought but new research is showing that is not true now we did learn this last year professor ragad from uh, baghdad university did inform us that the natural killer cells which i'd always taught um for, for the last 30 years as being non-specific actually acquired specificity uh, to attack particular viruses and that was new she, she just learned that last year and now we're seeing more new science coming through and the other term here is a uh, humoral immunity now if i say well are you in good humor today um that goes back to when we believed in this humoral theory of disease so humor basically means in, in the humors of the body is in the fluids of the body and the converse of that would be cellular immunity which is mediated by the cells like these cytotoxic t cells which brilliantly kill virally infected cells and save our lives on on a pretty well a daily uh, basis uh, so so what we're seeing here is humoral arm of the innate immunity so that's opposed to cellular immunity this includes diverse molecules with antibody like functions <laughs> so in other words the innate immune system is making molecules that work like antibodies that aren't molecules that aren't antibodies without first being exposed to without first being exposed to a, a virus now that that was news to me and i suspect it's news to quite a few people watching actually this is brand well of course it's brand new science it's published in peer-reviewed journal so interesting it's just so amazing the body is naturally making humoral immunity the these large chemicals that are in the well i assume the large chemicals but the, the, the these molecules that are in the body fluids in the blood and the tissue fluids acting like antibodies but they're not antibodies you're just just amazing we, we learn more and more about the immune system as we go along and uh, another reason for humans should be humble about what we don't know these include diverse molecules with antibody-like functions. Some serve as disease severity biomarkers for COVID. In other words, what this means to me is that the body is so clever here that when someone has COVID, the body is actually increasing the production of these. And we can look at the levels of these proteins in the blood, these large molecules in the blood, and say, oh, there's a lot of these large protein molecules, the, these immunological molecules in the blood. Therefore, this person has a more severe infection because the body's trying to make more to combat it. So not only are these molecules there anyway, the body's able to increase production of them during periods of viral infection, having antibody-like functions, but they're not antibodies. And I suspect for all of us watching today, that's the first time that we've learned that. I, I just learned that today myself. But just immune system just never ceases to uh, cause uh, amazement and admiration in its uh, level of complexity. And uh, yeah, it's just clever, just clever. Um, humor, humor, human, humor, human, humoral, fluid phase pattern recognition molecules is the name of these antibody-like molecules that are not antibodies of 12 tested two acted against sars coronavirus 2 i mean weird so they tested 12 and, and two acted uh, against sars coronavirus 2 and um they bound to the uh, viral nucleocapsid protein like an antibody does but it's not an antibody and they bound to spike protein as well now this is particularly interesting that this man knows binding lectin uh, mbl was uh predicted to recognize the omicron variant so the workers looked at this and they said oh this should work against omicron which of course is really good news part of the reason perhaps part of the reason perhaps that omicron is less severe and also this one uh, genetic polymorphisms at the ml mbl2 locus were associated with the disease severity now what this means 
This means that they've found out where these, this particular large molecule is produced or where the genetic information for this large molecule is stored in the genetic genome, way inside your DNA in your chromosomes. But they've also found polymorphisms in this gene. That means there's different forms of this gene. And it makes sense that different forms of this gene would produce differing amounts of this natural defense protein. That could give rise to people that are genetically pre predisposed to getting severe uh, mm. SARS coronavirus 2 and people that are genetically largely protected against SARS coronavirus 2. And this could be another reason why some people tragically have died, where other people get completely uh, asymptomatic infection. So that was, uh, I thought that was quite, uh, quite interesting. Now, just to finish off, just looking at a few of your comments today. Uh, Kerala, uh, getting over Omicron six days ago, uh, honestly, re honestly relieved to get this variant, fully vaccinated, missed my booster because I was showing symptoms. So I got a natural booster instead. Uh, I have some horrible colds before. This was an extremely mild version of that. Worst part was the four-day headache, which a lot of you are reporting. Uh, Lola, I got diagnosed with my kids five days ago. I feel so tired, got headache, lightheaded and cough. Uh, it feels long but not painful. One of my sons has nothing and the other is coughing a little four and five year old. So, so pleased to hear, uh, Lola, that um, the children are, are doing, the children are doing well and that the children had mild disease. Um, still need to take medical opinions, of course, if you possibly can get it when the children get sick. Got to be so careful with children. But, but, but good, good, news, good, good news there from, from, uh, from, from Lola, which I'm delighted to hear. Um, James, uh, my, my wife uh, and I went through this the week after Christmas. It was more than just mild for us. I think he means it was, wasn't mild. It was a bit worse than mild, although not unlike just a very bad cold. However, I lost my sense of smell for a few days. Not sure we didn't get Delta. Good point, James. It could have been at that time. We were vaxxed in April with Pfizer. I missed my booster due to illness. No info on how to proceed. Uh, now for the United States. So here, here, here we have James saying, uh, James living in the States, of course, uh, saying, now I've had natural immunity, should I get further injections? And uh, the current guidelines, I think, for that are yes, but I think that might be something that the CDC would uh, be good to pay attention to. If I do find something definitive on that, I will let you know. Uh, frequently asked questions. Tom. I don't get how they both evolved at the same time from the original variant. If that was the, the case, then BA2 is more transmissible, then we wouldn't have the spike of BA1 cases. The spike would have just been a BA2 spike. What a really good question, Tom. So, so, so t t t Tom here is saying, look, you've told us that BA2 is even more transmissible than BA1 Omicron. So why the heck did we have a BA1 spike with a less... Uh, infectious variant and why didn't we have a, a BA2 spike because it's more infectious so why didn't the BA2 outcompete the BA1 straight away why did BA1 even have to exist well, why didn't we go straight on straight on to BA2 ve 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 very good question because the more transmissible variant you would expect the more transmissible variant to be proliferating first and uh, the reason for that is called in evolutionary biology Tom it's called founder effect so it's a bit like saying, um, why were, were there no white people um, in Australia um, a thousand years uh, before Christ? Well, the reason there was no white people there in Australia a thousand years BC was because uh, they hadn't got there yet. They hadn't arrived yet, there yet. But the, the indigenous Australian population had. So they were multiplying there, moving throughout Australia because they were the ones that founded the population. So in the same way, I think what's happened here is the, the BA1 variant has found its way uh, in, into large populations, whereas the BA2 variant might have just been in a small isolated village in Botswana, for example, and hadn't had time to spread out. So the variant that arrived in South Africa first, the variant that arrived in the UK first, the variant that arrived in the United States first was the BA1. So well, phew, it took off. Then the BA2 found its way out of this uh, hypothetical village in Botswana uh, and, and started taking over from the, from the BA1. So that's the answer. It's called the founder effect. And it's a, well recognized in 
evolutionary biology. But what one heck of a good question, Tom. Thank you for that. And I think that's enough to keep us thinking for today. So thank you for watching.